Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is our new and improved APR 9600 demo board designed by us. It comes with a plug-in connector that plugs in directly right here and a detachable speaker which plugs in right here. Once you receive this kit and you receive all these three parts, you are ready to go. You just need a power supply of between 7 volts and, 10 vo and uh, 12 volts DC. There's a 5 volt regulator on board, a 78L05. You can pro program up to 8 different messages. There is a uh, a dip switch that offers uh, you the possibility of switching to from one message mode to two message mode to four message mode or eight message mode. And uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to show you how to use the device. And we also sell these as kits, so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to show you how to put one together from scratch. So we sell them as fully built modules or as kits. So check us out at engineeringshock.com. Let's put one together, power it up, and I'll show you how to work it. All right. Actually, right now I'm in eight message mode. From the top left, as you can see, we have a, uh, a four-pin dip switch, and they're all, all in the uh, off position. If you actually see in the lower right here, there is a an on indicator. So uh, right here on the upper left, we've got record and playback. When uh, when uh, the switch is flipped upwards towards the LED, you are in playback mode. The second and third switch from the left are cell 1 and cell 2 respectively, or selector 1, selector 2. Those will uh, determine what playback mode you're in. And the third is the uh, pull-up option, which is really only used for 8 mes eight message mode. Now you can always leave it in the up position. Right now they are all in the up position. So for 8 message mode, if we want to uh, bring it into record, mo record mode, we would flip the first switch down and leave the other three up. Now we can record eight different messages. Hi. How are you doing? Patrick here. From engineeringshock.com. Now I only met, used four different uh, messages, only did four different messages, but I placed them in, in, in memory for, sl for switch one, three, five, and eight. So what I'll do is I'll put it back into playback mode. So again, you can leave the uh, third, fourth switch on the right in the up position all the time. It shouldn't matter. And uh, if you want to uh, put it in one message mode, two message mode, or four message mode, I'll show you how to do that in just one second. Uh, the, we have the data ship sheet up on uh, our eBay store and up at engineeringshot.com in case you're interested in learning more about this. But if you have it set up in one message mode and you record, you can record for the longest duration. Two message modes, you can uh, you can record uh, that maximum duration divided by two. Uh, four message mode, that maximum duration divided by four, and eight message mo mode, that that set duration divided by eight. So let's try four message mode. As you can see, I've placed the second switch from the left down. It is the only switch that is down. So right now we are in playback mode. So of course, if we want to br make if we want to record something, we're going to bring switch one down. So now we've got the first two switches down, the second two switches up. Now we've got, we that's that's our option for four message mode. Here's switch one, two, I'm recording this, three, four, and you'll notice that five doesn't work. Only one, two, three, and four work. Now if I want to bring it into one single message mode, I'll bring switch three from the from the left down, and now I can only record one message, one really long message. For two message mode, uh, select one, which is the second from the left, should be up, and select two, from, uh, third from the left, should be down, as you can see. And uh, now you'll only be able to record on switch one and switch two. Switch three, and that will not work. My cat is being a nuisance. Go away, kitty cat. My cat is, in fact, being a nuisance right now. My cat is being a nuisance. Go away, kitty cat. As you can see, the other buttons do not work. 
Now, here's an interesting thing. If you want to repeat a message, there will be a delay, in, and there will be a delay, but you can repeat it by either shorting two pins using a transistor if you want, shorting the button pins. If I just hold this button down, and this goes for single message mode, two message mode, four message mode, and eight message mode. See what happens. My cat is being a My cat is being a My cat is being a So if you hold it down, you can repeat the message. There will be a single delay in between for about one second, but you can repeat. So if you have it in single message mode, you can uh, you can make a really long message, and using an external circuit, you can use a transistor or a relay to short the uh, the two pins on that button when it's in playback mode, and it'll just keep repeating it with a short delay in between. So let's talk about the kit. All this comes with the kit. You got your custom PCB, two red LEDs, two pin header, a uh, 10K multi-resistor, a 78L0550 regulator, an 8 watt 0.5 watt speaker, a uh, APR9600 dip socket, an APR9600, 28 pin, uh, a power jack that fits right into the board, 4 pin dip switch, power socket, 4 electrolytic capacitors, Two 10k, or sorry, two 10, 10 microfarad, one 100 microfarad, and one 220 microfarad. Six 0 0.1 microfarad uh, ceramic capacitors labeled 104. Nine monetary push switches. A uh, electric microphone. And eight resistors. Two 4.7k, one two 27k, one 470k one 100k and three 1k resistors so that's it so now what I'm going to do is we're going to put all of the resistors in place if you can't read resistor color code use your multimeter to determine which resistors are what first of all let's place our 1k resistors our 1k resistors go into the R4 slot R10 slot and R12 slot place them in and solder them into place Next, we're going to place our two 4.7K resistors into the R1 and R9 slots. They're side by side, so solder those into place. We're going to do our last three resistors in one step. They are R2, R7, and R5. R2 is 100K, R5 is 27K, and R7 is 470K. So R2 again is 100K. R7 is 470K, and R5 is 27K. So solder those into place, we'll get out of the capacitors. We next have our ceramic capacitors. They do not have any polarity. You have six of them. They're all labeled 104, and they are all valued at uh, 0 0.1 microfarads. So they can be placed in C6, C7, C4, C1, C5, and C3. Again, since there's no polarity, just solder them in. In this step, we're going to place our multi-resistor and our uh, electrolytic capacitors. Let's start with our multi-resistor. There, uh, there's one side that has writing on it and one side that does not. The side that has writing on it should say uh, something along the lines of A102J. Make sure that when you place it into the res1 slot, that the side with the A102J is facing the APR9600 area. Don't turn it around. Make sure that the writing is facing this side. So if you can't see the writing right now, I have it facing the AP9600 slot. That's what you want to do. If you turn it around, your circuit will not work correctly. Now we have uh, four electrolytic capacitors, one 220 microfarad, two 10 microfarad, and one 100 microfarad. C10 is a 10 microfarad. C2 is a 10 microfarad, C9 is a 220 microfarad, and C8 is a 100 microfarad. Each capacitor has uh, two different ways of showing you which is the negative side. There is a positive and there is a negative to these electrolytic capacitors. They are polarized. Um, however, since two of the capacitors are ha already have the leads cut, come with the leads already cut, you're going to have to rely on the secondary way. The first way uh, to determine which is the negative side is uh, each capacitor, the two of the capacitors have one long lead and one short lead. The short lead is the negative and the long lead is the positive. 
keep that in mind. However, on each capacitor, including the ones with the pre-cut, uh, the pre-cut pins, um, there is a white stripe along the negative side. So if you look on on these smaller capacitors, there is a white stripe on the side with the negative lead. So the negative lead on the side with a white stripe along the actual capacitor is your negative side. Now, each uh, each electrolytic uh, footprint here has a plus symbol on one side. That is where you want to place your positive. So C8 right here is where you, is uh, is your 100 microfarad capacitor. C9 is your 220 microfarad capacitor. C2 is one of your uh, 10 microfarad capacitors. And C10, which is right here, is your other 10K or 10 microfarad capacitor. So, place those all in, make sure you have the polarity set right, because they all have a positive indicator. Solder them in, and then we'll, uh, we'll get on to the uh, buttons. We're going to do a few steps in one here. We've got nine buttons. S9, 8765, 4, 3, 2, 1. They only really fit in one way, so pop them into place, solder them in. You've got a two-pin header. Solder it in J2. Make sure that the shorter leads go into the board so that the longer leads are facing the top of the board so you can plug in your speaker. Your 78L05 is your 5 volt regulator and it goes into the U2 footprint. Uh, there's a front flat side of the uh, 78L05 that has a writing on it indicating what it is. And there is a curved side. On the footprint there's a flat side and a curved side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that when you place the regulator that the curved side of the regulator faces the curved side of the footprint and that the flat side of the regulator faces the flat side of the footprint. Or else your circuit will not work. This circuit is used, uh, or this component is used to regulate your input voltage, which should be between 7 and 12 volts, down to a nice 5 volts for the AP9600 chip. Lastly, we have uh, our little uh, power plug, which goes into the connector right here. It's labeled ground and 12 volts. The circuit can use between 7 and 12 volts, so don't worry about that. However, there's a backside. You're seeing the backside right now, and that backside should face the uh, this capacitor right here, the input capacitor. If you turn it around, you'll see that you can. That's the front. You can see the pins. Make sure that you, know, you don't have to do this, but I would I, I would suggest that you do this. You have this side facing outwards. So solder that all into place, and then we'll uh, continue on. Next, we've got our dip switch and our two LEDs. Dip switch, very easy. In one corner, there is an on indicator. In the other corner, there is a DP indicator. From this perspective, make sure that when you place it in, from a bird's eye view, that the on indicator is in the lower right, uh, the lower right area of the footprint. Goes right into the footprint above res 1, into a footprint called dip 1. Next, we have two LEDs. Like the electrolytic capacitors, there is a short lead and there is a long lead. Long lead is the anode, or positive. Shorter lead is the cathode, or negative. Now, there's, they're labeled strobe and busy. On the footprint, there is a flat side and there is a curved side for both of them. It's very subtle. The, the, the flat side is on the side with the strobe indicator and the busy indicator. So place your shorter leads on the flat side, on the bottom, and your long leads in the top, on the curved side. Like the uh, capacitors and the LEDs, you'll notice that the mic footprint has a plus symbol on the right. There's two pins. Your, in your mic, actually, from this view, you'll never be able to see it, but there's a very, on the bottom, there is a very, very subtle little green area. And that green area, a little green speck, close to one of the pins is the indicator for ground. So place the, the pin that does not have that little green speck into the pin on the right here that has the positive symbol and place the pin with the green speck on the left. Then we're going to do our APR9600 socket, our APR9600 chip, and then we're going to power it up. The footprint, the socket, and the chip all have one thing in common. On the left side, there is a little notch indicator. You obviously might not be able to see it from the camera, but when you actually look at the footprint, there's a little notch right next to the U1 indicator on the left. Make sure that when you place your socket, that the notch on the socket to the left 
faces the notch on the footprint. And then when you place your chip in, make sure that the notch on the left-hand side of the chip is facing this way. So do all that, and then we're going to place our plug in. We're going to place our uh, we're going to place our speaker on the header. And we're going to power it up for the first time. All done. I've programmed eight messages into in, uh, into the APR 9600 in uh, eight message modes. Let's hear them.